Some shocking numbers from January 2022 out of PSA, SGC, and BGS grading. Stay with me. Hello, sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles friends. We are at what? Wednesday? It's hump day. Halfway through the week, I hope that you all are doing really good. Tom Brady is officially retiring, which makes the NFC South the worst division in football. Saints are falling apart. Panthers falling apart. Falcons falling apart. My neighbor got direct TV. Now you watch us in Falcon games every Sunday. Downright disgraceful. <laughs> But a dirty bird can't fly with a broken wing. And now the Bucks join the party. I assume that Gronk will be the next domino to fall. There's no way that Gronk is going to play without his buddy Tom. So that'll be that. Guys, if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button, the like button if you do like what you hear. We do put out five, six, seven videos a week all about collectibles, sports cards, and all the fun newsy stuff that comes about. Gemrate.com, a fantastic site, comes out with all sorts of data on the sports card market, came out with their January summary, and they really kind of break down the big three. I'm leaving off CSG. I really like CSG as well, but they're really tracking data mainly for BGS, PSA, and SGC. I would say those are the top three, frankly, so they're covering that base. But some of the data is really, really cool to kind of take a look at, analyze, kind of see where we are. What is the grading space doing? What are our thoughts? thoughts. So first, let's take a look at what has been graded over the last month. In January 2022, we've got basketball. Really no surprise, basketball is kind of the king, it feels like, as far as uh, what has been graded at PSA, especially over the last couple of years. But num the number two spot really, really shocks me. Still, it's TCG. It's trading card games. It's Pokemon and Magic the Gathering stuff. PSA graded in January 238,000 basketball cards and graded almost as many Pokemon trading card game cards at 200. 13,000. And to be frank, that's just kind of weird to me. I can't believe that there is that many coming down the pike. Now, I understand there was that big push kind of during the whole, you know, the Charizard phenomenon stuff from last year. A lot of these orders are a year old coming back, but it still shocks me that it's this many cards. It's astounding. In third place for PSA, we've got 145,000 baseball cards. Football, like usual, way down the list at 116,000. This one was a little bit surprising to me. Soccer cards, which there's been a lot of talk about soccer cards being kind of the, the next kind of the big thing where there's all sorts of opportunity. Um, and, you know, you've got World Cup coming up, etc. Only about 25,000 cards, soccer cards graded by PSA in the month of January last month. If we look at SGC and BGS, they're actually neck and neck. Um, but SGC actually graded more cards than BGS last month. 81,000 cards compared to 61,000 cards and that 61,000 number was a 24% increase from what BGS did in December, um, which, of course, there is all sorts of rumblings about SGC taking over that two spot from BGS. PSA has a wide margin of a lead in the grading space just in terms of volume. Now, as far as, you know, which company you prefer, which card grades or which company grades better, et cetera, that is all up for debate. But as far as just sheer volume of cards that are being graded, the demand for grading cards. It's PSA that really rules the day. 775,000 cards in total in January compared to 81,000 SGC, 61,000 at BGS. And when we look, uh, SGC and BGS, uh, fairly close in basketball, to about 20,000 cards for SGC, 24 and change, 24 and change thousand for BGS. Again, um, so TCG, trading card games, do not typically go with SGC. Only 2,900 cards in January, whereas 8,600 BGS slabs uh, for TCG, but still a very small percentage in comparison to what PCA, or excuse me, PSA does. 
25,000 baseball cards for SGC compared to about half of that, 12 and change, 12,000 for BGS, 17,900 SGC football cards graded compared to 10,500 for BGS, soccer 5.4 thousand and only one, about 1,500 cards, soccer cards graded by BGS last month. Soccer card folks are not going with BGS, it doesn't look like, at least for the month of January 2022. Now, another kind of cool percentage thing that Gemrate has here is it's breaking it down by grade the eras that were graded. So this kind of gives you a nice snapshot as to, are we talking about, you know, new stuff, ultra modern 2020s? Are we talking about 2010s, 2000s, 90s, 80s, and down? And this kind of gives a cool snapshot where PSA is at 57.7 of the cards that they grade were 2020s, and how many of them actually got gem rate condition? 57.7%, it's 58.4% for BGS, and only 40.9% for SGC. So there is um, an argument that can be made for, and of course, it's going to come down to each particular card, but according to this very general data, this very general piece of data here, um, it looks like SGC is a tougher gem rate percentage overall, if we're looking at kind of the macro compared to PSA and BGS. If we go to the 2010s, 51.1% gem rate percentage for PSA, 45.2 for BGS, 38.3% for SGC. The 2000s, 24.1% PSA, 20.3 BGS, and 12% for SGC. In the 1990s, it's 19.7% for PSA, 10.4 BGS, and 7.5%. 80s cards, 19.5% PSA, BGS 3.8%, 1.2% for SGC. So I don't know. If we're looking at kind of who grades tougher for 80s cards, it's, I mean, I don't know. I think I might want to wait for PSA in comparison to SGC where we've got 19.5% compared to 1.2%. That's wild. We can also see here what percentage of the items were graded for each grader. So this is breaking it down. So the last numbers I was giving were which ones were gem rate, which ones were getting a gem rate grade. This is percentage of items graded for each grader going by era. So if you're looking at PSA, you've got 27.9% of their stuff was ultra modern, 17.9% for BGS, and then 41.6% for SGC. This is actually a big climb though for SGC. If you think about it, SGC was always a vintage grader. Um, they're, they're heavy on vintage and they're not doing the same sort of volume as a PSA, but they have not historically been an ultra modern, modern grader. And so this is where this data is, is interesting. In the 2010s, PSA did 43.6% of the cards were in the 2010s, BGS 50.9%. It always seems like when I look at this data, BGS, the meat of the cards that they grade are 2010s, it seems like. BGS at 50.9%, only 18.6% for SGC. And then you kind of go down this list. It's kind of interesting though, if you go all the way down to the bottom here, 1950s or earlier, PSA is less than 1%, BGS it's less than 1%, SGC 9.3%. So SGC is really doing the, as far as the cards that are sent to them. So that's not, it's not as if SGC is doing a bunch more of the older stuff than PSA. It just means for the cards that they are receiving at their company, 9.3% of SGC cards are 1950 years, 1950s or earlier. And of course, PSA, it might be less than 1%, but it's still, it could be a lot of cards just because PSA is doing a lot more volume. Any surprises for you on this list? I am still shocked at um, the number of Pokemon cards that are still being graded. Because this is, honestly, we've looked at this for the last few months, three, four months. Pokemon has either been number one or number two as far as the type of cards being graded over basketball, over baseball. And I'll be honest, that just surprises me. I did not think that it would be that high. And then also for soccer, I thought that there would have been more soccer cards graded in January, just with all of the, you know, the excitement, I guess, around World Cup. And I have just seen a lot of the, you know, the card show vlogs and things where people are asking about soccer cards, soccer cards this and soccer cards that. Now, it could just be that that was just a month where it happened to be down, but i um, interested to watch that as well. Any surprises for you guys? Let me know your thoughts in the comments for the grading wars and what's happening. 
happening? Is SGC taking over the number two spot? SGC and BGS are there are right neck and neck as far as their volume. SGC is actually doing more volume over the last couple months than BGS, but does BGS have some sort of an ace up their sleeve? They are not very talkative out. They're not out front a lot talking, whereas Peter at SGC is, and of course, Nat Turner for PSA certainly is. And so, you know, I kind of wonder what's coming for BGS as we move further into 2022. And then also SGC, um, you're just hearing a lot of glowing reports about turnaround time. I actually have my first submission is there uh, at SGC. I'm excited to get that back here in the next you know few weeks or so. Um, but it's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens with PSA, their pricing, their turnaround times, uh, what that's going to look like. Don't forget to join Brad and I on Brad the Comeback Card Investor channel tonight. We are going to have the guy that is running the Culture Collision show. It's going to be exciting. Raphael, he will be on and he will be talking all about the Culture Collision show in Atlanta. We're excited to meet up with him and kind of see what's going on. I'm going to be at that show, so I'm pumped. So guys, we will keep you posted. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later. 